here. We are at Hands and Feet on 103rd in Jacksonville, Florida. And today is our second episode of Who Are You? And I told you a little bit about what we were going to be doing in the future. So um, we're going to start with our haircuts and our interviews so we can get to know some people who are in some need. So Shaylee is very nervous because she says she doesn't want anything but her bangs cut. Right? Right? That's all we're going to do. We're just going to trim. We're going to trim your bangs and we're going to talk a little bit, okay? So we're going to show the people what we're going to be doing when we get this nice salon bus and we get to take it around and do stuff like this all over Jacksonville um, for people who can't afford it and then for people who can. not Everyone deserves to feel good about themselves and that's why I'm doing it this way because sometimes I feel like in order for you to um, feel good about yourself and what you're doing in life, it's important for you to love the person that you see in the mirror and I help people do that by doing hair. Um, so Shaylee, um, first of all, let's figure out what you want to do with your hair. Where do you want your bangs to fall? Uh, probably about above my eyebrows a little bit. Above your eyebrows, so you can see, right? Yeah, because I want to be like... So we can see your beautiful <laughs> face. Yes. Okay, so I want to ask you a question. Do you mind if I ask you some questions, Shaylee? No. Okay. Okay, so can you tell me a little bit about why you're here at Hands and Feet today? Well, I came because um, I knew that there was going to... Rich and Lee are going to be here to uh, sing and songs about God, and I knew we are going to have a good Bible study and good food. So I just knew I wanted to come and see the all good songs and stuff. That's a good Shaylee. What do you like to do for fun? For fun, I normally go outside and do like cartwheels and stuff. <laughs> that's that's nice. And do you have some dreams of what you want to be when you grow up? Well, mainly I have dreams Ooh. of being a vet. A veterinarian? Yep. Because you love animals. Yep. That's good. Do you live close by? I live on Normandy Boulevard. It is close by, huh? And your mom came with you today, right? Yep. And how old are you? Ten. Oh, I remember being ten. When I was a little girl, my mom my mom passed away. And I remember being ten because that was the year after she passed away. So it was really hard for me. Have you had anything in your life that has been hard for you? Well, my mom's cat passed away in the summer. <laughs> my my mom's dad passed away in 2012. That's your grandpa, right? Yeah. And I think my dad's mom died in 2012, too. And my dad's died. My dad's dad died in 2012, too. And luckily, I haven't got any more stitches like I did last time. Stitches? Yep. What do you mean, stitches? I've been through 200 sets of stitches. 200 sets of stitches, wow. Wow. Wow, you are blessed, aren't you? <laughs> you're still here and you're still okay. You got the I, I blow dry God. these bangs for you so I can show you what they look like when they're dry and they're nice. I promise I'll be easy with my brush. I know that's something that you were worried about. I'm gonna turn up sideways, okay? One of the best things about getting your hair done, which hopefully I'll be able to share with you soon, is getting the shampoo, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Soon, soon as we get this bus, anybody out there that's got a bus and you want to donate to help build this salon Hollywood on Beatles so that we can go around and make some changes for some people, then I'll be able to shampoo people like Shaylee's hair for her after I give her a nice haircut. If she lets me cut her hair. Yeah, as long as you don't use a comb too hard. I won't. Did I use it too hard? I think we're stuck. I think I'm stuck. I'm stuck! Ah! Okay. Your friends in school are going to be like, mm, let's see, hair. let's see. Let's fancy them up now. So these are my texturizing shears. And when I use these, I just use these so that I can make the ends look um, feathery. Nice and feathery, because you have very good hair, Shaylee. You have very thick, thick, nice hair. Nice, thick hair. Ooh, I wonder what your mom's gonna say. <laughs> oh, you know what I don't have that I need to bring next time? 
is a mirror. Why don't you go run to the bathroom after I take this cape off and you tell me what you think about your bangs, okay? Go now. Go now. It was nice meeting you. You too. We'll be right back. Shaylee. Um, I like my haircut. She did an awesome job. And if I had some money, I'd give her a $5 tip. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. It's not for the money. I know. I would it's for the smiles. Thank you, though. I'm glad that you like it, okay? Go enjoy the food. We'll be right back with we'll our... We'll be right back with our second client. Okay, you bet. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. So we have our second guest here with us today, Mr. Terry Anderson. He asked me if I could say. <laughs> yes, yes. So we are still here live at Hands and Feet. There's food going on. I'm here with Ameri with Mike from American Hearts Radio. And um, I think, Terry, I might turn you to the side. It might be okay to turn you to the side. I want to make sure everybody can hear. So um, as we're cutting Terry's hair, first tell me what you want me to do. You want a skin fade? Yes, High fade, low fade, mid fade? I'm going to do it accordingly. Okay, you want these waves to come out, don't you? Yeah. Ready to show off that hair? Cool. So um, I wanted to ask Terry a couple of questions. Um, one, why are you here today? Well, I went to, uh, I went to prison when I was 16 years old. And I just served uh, 33 years, and I came back out, and uh, I was homeless on 103rd, uh, got to know the people with hands and feet, and now I'm the maintenance man at McDonald's on 103rd, uh, and started my whole life over, and uh, I'm hoping to get courage to other people that drugs ain't the answer to the problems. Terry, can you tell me a little bit about what kind of drugs you were using? Look down for me. I wasn't was our own drugs. I was, uh, I've done some armed robberies when I was 16. They gave me uh, five to life. So I served uh, 33 years in the State Department of Correction in Virginia. I got out in 2013. My family had moved down here, and that's how I ended up in Jacksonville, Florida. What was your life like when you made the decision to do those robberies? What, where, where, where was your heart? Where was your mind when those things happened? Like, what was going on in your life? It was, I would uh, think you'd have to be in a pretty bad predicament to was, make just, a decision to do something. It was just a rush. That you needed to fill a void or something? Yeah, it was like a rush to give. It was like a, mostly it was a game. You know, I was a kid, it was a, you know, ain't nobody get hurt. It was a game, and uh, but when we got caught, it wasn't a game no more. It was reality. I seen you in service this morning. Um, do you feel like since your life has changed, that your relationship with God has changed? Yes, uh, you know, because I always been with God. God is the one that made me survive that 33 years in prison. When I had oh, I couldn't have done it. Yeah. 33 so. years is a long time, right? I can't imagine 33 yeah. years in prison. That's some people's whole whole lives. Yeah. Glad you're free, brother. Yeah. 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 I'm happy you have a job, and then and you're working, and, and you're showing it out, and have to... You know, I got good people, uh, my employees. Say know, that again. I got good people, my employees. I went to McDonald's, so I was straight up with them. I ain't lied to them. I told them my situation, and they gave me a chance. Yeah, so, uh, I ain't let it go yet. I think that that's important that people give opportunity because sometimes you get branded with that one mistake. That one mistake is yeah. who you are for the rest of your life. You know, just like, just like I feel like some people feel like that about people who, who are, you know, on the streets. You know, they look at them and feel like, oh, they, they don't have anything, they don't have anything to offer. Those are the, those are the people with the stories. Those are the people with the testimonies. Those are most of the time the people with the faith because when you don't have anything is when you're praying the most. When you have everything, when are you praying? That's fine. When are you praying? You know? On Sundays. Yeah. On Sundays <laughs> in church. I'm, I'm excited to be doing this for everybody. I'm just hoping that um, from people getting to know everybody here at Hands and Feet and the people whose hair cut and the people who watch the show that they see, okay, 
you know, let's get let's get these people let's get these people a bus so we can really go out there and make a, make a difference. Like go to some you know kids who've lost their parents or kids that are on the streets right now. You know, they live in these neighborhoods where they they need people to look up to. Otherwise, they're gonna make decisions like what what you made, and then spend thirty years. 30 years in prison and you know some people probably wouldn't have survived it or the system might have kept you because that's possible I know people don't think it's possible some people think that they're invincible you know but you're not you're not and once they get a hold of you you better hope that you find God yeah and uh most hope you better, hope, better hope you find them because <laughs> you're gonna be pretty lonely if you don't you know and most of the things in Jacksonville West Side needed the most y'all need a shelter because West Side ain't got nowhere for these people to go on this side of town. They gotta go all the way downtown. Some of them don't have no ID. If they ain't got no ID, they can't get in the shelter. You need a sanctuary. Yeah, so they got an empty Kmart right up there. If everybody come together and donate, they can make that out of the shelter. You gonna run it? <laughs> wow, drug free. Amen. So have you thought about going and uh, sharing your testimony with, in the Juvenile Justice Department? Uh, when I came out, my parole officer, uh, she kept on telling me when I got off parole, don't forget to write the book, get involved with the juvenile system because you, you can uh, give them what you know from experience, not from what you heard, right. but what you actually did yourself. And uh, I had to get myself together before I can get somebody else together. Right. Because I couldn't do that while I was living out on the street. So once I got me a job and got me a place to live, you know, I'm ready to take that next step. Amen. Yeah. You know, James is going into uh, Rayford, the Union, and Duval on the 19th and the 20th of this month. Yes. He's going in to talk to the juveniles. Yeah. And they got a they got a program here called Operation New Hope. Yes. If people are getting out some assistance, because they're going to find you a job. They're going to take you to your interview. They're going to sit there with the interview. Nine out of ten, you already got the job. But they want to know how you act according to where they trained you before you get there. Yeah. Right? So uh, that's, what, that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do, bro. Hey, guys. I'm still here. Yeah, <laughs> still here. So Terry, let me tell you um, a little bit about me, if you want to know why I why I why I do this. Um, so I I um I did music my my whole life, and um, I lost my mom. Well, I lost my mom's suicide when I was nine, and um, I started doing music when I was about 15. My dad let me go on the road. You know, I was singing the national anthem. Uh, 28 states twice before I turned 17 but you know I I still all I, ever since my mom died I always felt like something was missing and instead of asking me what was wrong I was prescribed a bunch of prescription medications and things like that so I was extremely suicidal and um, I uh, I ended up leaving the music industry like right before I was um, going to get a large amount of money because I, I said, well, if you take this money, you're going to die a drug addict. And my music's all about positivity and making changes and stuff like that. And I thought, well, gosh, who am I if they can't look up to me? Who, who am I? What else can I do? Once I quit doing music, I thought, what else can I do? What else am I good at? Because I was not good at anything else. That's all, that's all I'd ever done. And I thought, well, okay, you know, you did all your hair and the makeup for the music videos. Why? why don't you do hair like why don't you help people feel good about themselves and what they see when they look in the mirror so that maybe they could go out and face the day feeling a little bit better because i think people expect a lot from people who don't really have anything you know they want you to do this they want you to get a job they want but where's the where's clothes what your hair look like you know i mean those those are just the things that they judge you for as soon as you walk in the door first thing what do they judge you what what does most of the people in this world judge you based on what you look like not who you are and so i think it's important that we start learning about 
who some people are who don't have everything. We've got a lot of people that look up to all these people on TV and these celebrities and these Instagram stars and all that stuff. Those people aren't showing you who they are. They're showing you what they have. They show you what they have. They don't show you who they are. And um, I just think that this is a good way for, for us to start making a change. I mean, spreading the word a little bit making people feel good, let people be able to talk about themselves and the things that they went through because it's important for everybody to feel like they matter. Yeah. And everybody has a different story and every different story matters. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm getting the cue, so we'll be right back. I'm gonna line you up. Hey everybody, Johnny Van Zandt from Leonard Skinner here with the sign of Hands and Feet. We want you to go out and donate. We want you to go see them. God bless each and every one of you. Support, support, support. Amen. Amen. Hey, everybody. Johnny Van Zandt here from Skinner. Hey, I want you to donate to the Hands and Feet West Side. West Side the best side. There you go. That's where I was born at. Anyway, hey, listen. They're feeding homeless vets, uh, homeless people, helping people recover. They're a good organization. Don't forget, donate Get to the Hands and Feet West Side. God bless. Hello, everybody. I'm Amy Gandy from Hands and Feet Foundation. It is a nonprofit organization, 501c3, that my husband and I started four years ago. What we do is we feed the least of these. We help the least of these in our community and everywhere else if they want to come. We have hot meals every day from 1230 to 2. After we eat, we have a Bible study every day. We have clothes, food. Once a month, we have free doctors, free psychiatrists, a free optometrist, dentist, and these are real licensed practitioners and we have haircuts on Mondays we help people get into rehab and detox from drug addiction life on the street where they need help we have homeless shelters that we facilitate with that if they want to get off the street we help homeless veterans get off the street because there's no reason they should be out and how we do all this we do it for free from donations volunteers and from people like y'all we would like for you to look us up on Facebook, Hands and Feet Westside. We'd like for you to look at our website, handsandfeetfoundation.org. Our address is 7478 103rd Street, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. The Bible says that when you have done unto the least of these, you have done unto me. Thank you. Hey everybody, go to handsandfeetfoundation.org and support them. Don't forget, support, support, support. For the Son of Man who came to seek and save the lost, Luke 19.10. Thanks, oh. <laughs> I want to get a little. All right, hey Terry, how you like your hair? I like whoa, my, whoa! I like my hair so good when I go to work at McDonald's. I ain't gonna wear hair. <laughs> 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 and we've got Miss Judy over here. Uh, Miss Judy, you showed me a picture earlier about what you wanted your hair to look like. Yeah. Um, so you like it kind of short, right? Yes. Yeah. Let's cut it down. So, do you know typically like what guard they normally use? Um, because you got a lot of hair going on here, well, Miss Judy. It, you think you want to take it all off? No, I mean, up here. Do you want me to shape it up? Shape it up. And then here, I'm going to fade it out. Okay, in and the back, on the, neck, out. on the neckline. Uh huh. And this side but, fade it out. But you want to leave this longer, right? Yeah, as long as it blends in. Okay, I got but you. you got Okay, I got you. And this got a blend in. The tape frame right there. Yep, okay. I got you. You want to see it? Show it to me again. I think the top was really short when yes. I, if I remember what I seen correctly, Miss Judy. Yes, ma'am, it was. And then you could start telling me a little bit about you since uh -huh. you've seen how it goes. Oh, Miss Miss Judy, that is short. So you want to leave no. it longer than this, or was yes, it slick back? Real. Was it slick back? No. Okay. Yeah, Miss Judy, that's short. You want you want me just shape up? I mean, I don't mind. It's just you want me just shape it up? Yeah, just shape it up. I got you. Okay. okay. So let me pump this chair up. Okay. Somehow I got stuck underneath here, but everything's still working well. So, um, Miss Judy, I'm going to ask you the same thing I've been asking everybody else. I'm kind of curious to know why you're here at Hands and Feet with these cute little babies and this lady with you. Oh, well, I come here. Down for worship, um, the church I normally in, um, you know, they open on Wednesday and Sunday. You can't walk in there to pray. Uh -huh. And, uh, but I called my granddaughter. She's very close to me. Uh-huh. Uh, Jessica Garcia, 
He's very, very close to me with her baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she told me about this place, she said, Mom, you don't have to worry about no food, no nothing that take care of your, your body and your soul. I've been meeting in that all day. And um, it, it's just amazing. The feeling I got here, I never felt before in Jacksonville. Never in yeah. any other church? Never ever been in any other church in Jacksonville. Uh -huh. And I didn't want to tell me I give a haircut. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> She's ready. Yeah. Miss Judy, where do you live? I live on the west side on 110. Uh, I have I live in a trailer. Mm -hmm. And the, the lady keeps it up very well. I built me a garden out front. Uh -huh. um, and I wear a metal brace on my leg to keep my legs intact. Because mm -hmm. I have degenerative bone disease. I'm pausing for one second, Miss Judy. Okay. Because I've gotten I've gotten myself tangled somehow. So you have a uh, there we go. Degenerative bone disease? Yes. And then I have um the thing you get from smoking too much. Uh, emphysema? No, not emphysema. C O P D. C O P D, yeah, that's right. I try to forget about it. They give me medicine and stuff. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. You know. Um, I'm gonna be praying for a healing for you. Oh yeah, yeah, praying for a big healing for me. I was taking in for the emergency pacemaker two months ago because my heart has went so slow. He said if I fell asleep, I wouldn't wake up. So that's what I've done. Um, I never used drugs. I was a fighter. A fighter? Yeah, I drunk. I drink to get drunk so I can fight. I'm a very nice person about my drinking, so therefore I had to stop drinking. How long ago did you stop drinking? Um, well, I haven't had a cigarette drink about 35 years. What? Yeah. And how did you do that? Because there are a lot of people out there that... Well, you know how I did it? I my main thing Thank was God. God. I mean, that's a good answer. I learned to pray. I learned to forgive. And most of all, I learned to love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, hey, that's what my shirt says, Miss Judy. Love. Yeah. I thought yeah. it would be appropriate because I think that that's super important. Yes, it is. Spreading some love. Now, be real, real steel for me. I'm gonna make these look real nice for you. you got these sideburns. We wanna make these look nice and pretty for you. Thank you. So you can do your edges. Mm -hmm. I like to try to change my hair, Miss Judy. I like to try to change my hair sometimes. So. I think as a woman, we all like that, right? Right. We like to keep up on our hair. It's oh, not yeah. always easy to afford it, is it? No. That's why my granddaughter there, Jessica, she gave me some hair clippers. <laughs> and I do all right. Doing your own hair? Yeah, but it's all right, because I wear a scarf all the time. Because you owe a scarf all the time. Yes, uh -huh. ma'am. Uh -huh. she gave me some expensive clippers. And um, they, they were fantastic. It's just my hand no one to work. But um, otherwise, everything cool. When was the last time you had a haircut? <laughs> uh, you mean when the last time I used my scissors? No, when is the last time you got to go and let someone do your hair? I haven't. Ever? Ever. You're the first person I've ever let in my head. <laughs> oh, I feel so special! <laughs> I went to Paul Mitchell, so you're in good hands. They well, they trained me well. And that's the honest truth. I never, even when it was long, I did it myself. Whether it turned out right or wrong, I never, even as a child, my parents say, my mom did my hair, she was in trouble. <laughs> I never let no one in my hair. Baby, you deserve to get pampered. Yeah. You do. Thank you. The Lord wants you to be pampered. That's well, why you're here. Now, you know what? I'm here, but eventually everybody's going to go home. I'm going to go home. And now uh, there's nobody there. You got My Jesus with dead. you. You're alone? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. You know. And my granddaughter keeps me busy. I feel you, honey. I just, I just lost my wife. Yeah, you know, I did. I just lost my mom. They're in heaven with Jesus you know, looking down on us right now. That's right. You know, 
I, I, I want to believe that. I really, really do. Believe it. Look you down know? for me, Miss Judy. Let's clean this up. She has a lot of hair. So I like to do this, like, carving technique, Miss Judy. Uh -huh. Like, I, I, um, because you do have so much wave in your hair, and you wanted some of it brought down, so I like to try to keep the shape when it grows out, keep the shape of these, of these waves for you. Do a great job, Crystal. Yeah. Let's see, I'll, clean, it, I'll clean this up on the, on the bottom just a little bit more. Sometimes if I come in with these bad boys, it's easier. I kind of just take it's a, it. It's a craft, isn't it? And glide it, yeah, glide it off of your head, following all of these, these waves, but not going all the way to the scalp because you don't want to take it all the way down. No. And I'm sorry that you're, that you are, um, Feeling like when you go home, by by that by you're that you're alone. Yeah. That it deserves to feel like that. But like Mike said, you know, prayer prayer is always good. But I mean, obviously you know that because you're here. You came here yeah. today for for service. Sometimes it's good to talk about it too. You know, to talk about what what what's going on and how you're feeling and. Have girlfriends. It's good yeah. to have girlfriends, you know. Right. So this is your girlfriend time. Then, then I use chances for all that stuff. You what? I use my grand. I call them my granddaughter. That's perfect. Yeah. Right, but you know, uh, but you've got that. The some girls are. What word am I looking for? They're um. I'm almost done. Sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky people out there in the you world, sure right? Do. Yeah. <laughs> that's every that's everywhere we go, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think just, sometimes they make you I'm, smarter because you learn from them. I'm well, trying to find a problem. If I hadn't learned learn something by now, I'm I'm old. If I ain't learned it by right now, I ain't gonna learn it. So therefore, I don't have any. I pretend sometimes. I sit down two plates, two cups of coffee. And I be talking with my mom. She's my best friend. Amen. You know? And some people say, oh, you need to see a doctor. You're going crazy. I say, no, I'm not. You're going crazy when you don't realize it's a fantasy. But I know it's not real. And I know one day I'm going to be next to my mama. Amen. You know? And I'm not going to be sick. She's not going to be sick, and she'll never die. You never die and leave me. You have life everlasting. Yes. Amen. You know? And I appreciate y'all so much. I mean, no, it must have been God. So no one had to convince me for you all to cut my hair. <laughs> I to take me home early so I can cut my hair. And then all of a sudden, y'all come out there and say, haircut. <laughs> and Jessica, look, this is your time, Mom. Get your hair cut. I said, I thought he was going to cut it. <laughs> I said, you you don't want me cutting it. Cutting <laughs> you think so. Yeah, you're yeah. candy looking. You know? And I said, I told myself I tried to look, I tried to be as regular as possible. Well, you look awesome. So when they hollered haircut, I tried to run up here and be the first one in line, but with my braids, I, I did pretty good. I was number three. We're almost done. Okay. So and we will, and, and we have two minutes, so we are almost done. So they will get to see what you think when we're finished. Okay. I'm leaving you all this up here, just Don't shaping worry. it up, you know. Okay, thank you. Mom, come here. Come here. I'm definitely going to need the use of a mirror once once we get things rocking and rolling. Cute. Oh, that is nice. I want to see Thank you. you. Let me, gorgeous. let me just, let me just like shape these little flyaways. Okay. Um, cause I, I, I do like to do that. Just get it as clean as possible for you. And then I want you to uh, go look in the mirror and come back and tell everybody how you like it. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Don't look for me. Yes, ma'am. Hi, 
round. You are a little princess. Aha! Okay, go see! Okay. <laughs> Let me take this off of you, yeah. Now we put it back with the seat. Okay, right back in. Good on the right, okay? okay? We'll be right back. Okay, guys, we'll All be right, right back, okay? Did it. Crystal just finished my hair. And to me, it is awesome. She deserved an award <laughs> of being able to convince someone with their first haircut. <laughs> I've never had a haircut by no one but me. Aww. So I want to thank you, Miss Crystal. I want to thank you, photographer. <laughs> and thank the church and the Holy Ghost for being in here. Amen. Amen. I love you all. Amen. We love you. God bless thank you. you. Okay, we'll turn on the road, road right? Okay. All right. Walk me down.